Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. In this video, we're going to look at the marquee tools inside of Photoshop Elements. So let's go over to Elements and get started. There are two marquee tools in Elements, the Rectangular Marquee and the Elliptical Marquee. These are selection tools, and like all selection tools, they allow you to select a portion of your image so just that portion will be affected by the next command you perform in Elements, whether it be a color tone adjustment or running a filter on that area. And the marquee tools are the selection tools to use if you want to select a square, rectangle, circle, or oval. They're located near the top of the toolbox, and they both share the same space. Depending on which marquee tool was last used, that's the one you'll see in the toolbox but they are both represented by dotted lines. Right now we see the elliptical marquee tool, but if I click and hold on that, both of them will appear. Let's start with the rectangular marquee tool, so I'll just click on that to make it active. You create a rectangular selection by clicking and dragging with the tool. Wherever you first click becomes a corner of your selection. Where you drag and let go of the mouse button becomes the opposite diagonal corner of your selection. Once you let go of the mouse button to complete your selection, the selected area will be represented by marching ants. I'll show you what I mean. Let's say we want to select the inset panels on the red door. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. Now I'm going to place my cursor in the upper left corner of the first door panel and click and drag diagonally to the opposite corner. And as long as I don't release the mouse, I can continue adjusting the size and shape of the selection. When I get it where I want, I release the mouse, and the selection is indicated by the marching ants. At this point, I still have three other panels to select on the door. But if I go over to the next panel and click and drag to select it, it replaces my first selection. And that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and undo that. So remember, if you want to add to your selection, you need to hold down the Shift key as you select the next area. So this time I'll press the Shift key and a tiny plus sign appears next to my cursor. Now I can go ahead and click and drag where I want to add the next part of the selection. And when I get it where I want it, I release the mouse, and now that area is also selected. Now I'll press Shift again, and I'll select my other panel, and do the same on the next. At this point, we have the four rectangular panels selected and we can apply any change we want and only the selected door panels will be affected. The other thing I want to show you about making selections is just the same as we press the shift key to add to our selection, you can press the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC to subtract from a selection. Let's say we changed our mind about applying a change to all four panels on the door and we only want to change the top two. We can hold those keys down, the Option or Alt key, as we click and drag the Marquee tool over the bottom panels and it will subtract that part of our selection. And you see a little minus sign appears when I press down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And then just click and drag and those areas are deselected. And just for the sake of demonstration, let's make a quick levels adjustment by going up to the Enhance menu and choose Adjust Lighting Levels. I'm going to lighten the selected panels by moving the middle slider towards the left and then click OK. So you can see by having an area selected only the selected areas are affected by the levels move that we just made. And that's the whole idea behind selections. I'm going to undo that. 
and I'm going to deselect by, I can do it a couple ways. I can either go up to the select menu and choose deselect, or I can press Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC. The other thing I wanted to show you is you can constrain your selection to a perfect square with the rectangular marquee by holding down the shift key as you click and drag. So I'll hold down my shift key and then click and drag and you can see I get a perfect square. So you may be wondering at this point, I thought you said to hold down the shift key to add to your selection. Well that's true, it works a little differently depending on what stage you're at. So when you first make a selection on, an, on a photo, if you hold down the shift key, it will constrain to a square. After you already have a selection, and then you hold the shift key and select another area, it will add to your first selection. So don't let that trip you up. I'm going to deselect that by pressing Command D on the Mac or Control D on a PC. And now let's go over to the toolbox and select the elliptical marquee. So if I click and hold on the rectangular marquee, both of them appear, and then I can just choose the elliptical marquee. And it's hard to get it to go right on the area you want on your first try. So I'm going to show you a little trick to using the elliptical marquee. You can actually use this with the rectangular marquee tool also, but this is what it is. So I have my elliptical marquee around the oval window. It's not quite selecting the oval window the way we would want it to. I'm going to go up to the Select menu and choose Transform Selection. And as you can see, when I do that, we get a bounding box around our selection. Now I can just grab any of these middle handles and pull them to where I want the edge of my selection to be. So I'll pull that one to there. The top one's already pretty good but I can pull it to the top of the window. This one I can pull to the bottom, and this one I can pull to the right side. And now you can see the marching ants go right around the oval window. Now click on the green check mark to commit to my selection, and the bounding box will go away. And you can constrain the elliptical marquee to a perfect circle by holding the shift key just like we did with the rectangular marquee. So let me deselect that, and now I'll hold the shift key, and as I click and drag, you can see that my selection remains a perfect circle. So there you have it. I think I covered all the important ins and outs of the marquee tools. Be sure to subscribe to my videos by clicking on the subscribe button right above this video. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.